Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're ready for this session. We're going to cover how to secure Office 365 and your other SaaS application using Microsoft Gatsby or Cloud App Security. So how is it going at the moment? How is the event? Is it great? Yeah. yeah. So you've probably seen this slide for months and in many different conferences, but what these slides mean behind those numbers is that cloud applications are now everywhere in every organization. And every organization relies on a lot of those SaaS applications. That's true. And what we've also seen is that many of those applications, IT has no clue that it's somewhere there sitting in their environment and their users are uploading some data, downloading some data, maybe sharing some uh, really sensitive information across those applications. And nobody knows exactly how those applications work and what people are doing with them. So to be able to secure those applications, we need something, and that something is called a CASB. So here you have Gartner, the uh, explanation about what CASB is. But you can think about a CASB, so CASB Cloud Access Security Broker. It's going to be a solution that will be sitting between the user and the application. What's the goal? The goal is to provide control and security for the user and data, the data traveling between those two endpoints. And you can see that by 2022, 80% of the large organization will have a CASB. So just for my knowledge, who is using a CASB at the moment? OK, so not many people. And who is using another CASB than the Microsoft one? OK, so please stay. I will try to convince you to use our solution. Thanks, that's great. I hope we have some uh, salespeople here, because that's a big opportunity for upsetting our solutions. Take note. So let's spend some time to review a CASB use cases. And when I'm talking about CASB use cases, I'm not talking about Microsoft CASB. I'm talking about any CASB solution. And those use cases, you will see here that the, the idea is to see here that we have a lot of those SaaS applications accessible from inside your corporate network, but also outside your corporate network, maybe from home, from guest Wi-Fi. And your internal users are going to access those applications, but also external people. And those people that will access your cloud application will connect from managed devices, your smartphone that are managed by Intune or any MDM, maybe uh, Windows 10 PCs that are part of your Active Directory domain, but maybe from unmanaged devices. Any BYOD project somewhere here in the room? Probably a lot. So now user wants to be able to access their data, their application from any device, from anywhere, and from any, lo yeah, any location at in any time. So there is a true challenge here to be able to secure your company valuable data when users are using this kind of application. So let's spend some time on those use cases now. So let's think about all these applications that people are using. The first thing that you have to do when you think about those different uh, controls that you want to apply is to first discover the cloud application that are used within your company. We just said before that IT is not aware of those applications. What applications are in use? We don't know. So we need a way to identify those applications. So this is the shadow IT discovery part that we'll cover, or discovery in short. So when you've discovered those applications, that's great. And many firewall vendors are able to tell you, oh, you're using all those applications. OK, great. But you have to go further. You have to assess those cloud applications. And you have to verify if those cloud applications are meeting your security and compliance requirements. You probably have or should have some policy in place to validate which cloud application should be allowed within your organization. That's something that the CASB will do for you. And you will not have to go to every SaaS application uh, website to see, hmm, is it GDPR compliant? Does it support single sign-on? Uh, what are the security requirements? Where is the data hosted? All those things will be done by a CASB. And then when you have identified those applications, you will be able to triage those applications and select which application should be 
unsanctioned. So unsanctioned means they are not managed by IT and I don't want my user to use it. And move them, when they can be controlled, to a sanctioned state. Sanctioned means that IT has some control on those applications. How can you do this? You can, for example, switch from uh, application authentication to single sign-on with Azure Active Directory or any IDPs. That's another thing that you're going to do. You've discovered that people are using Dropbox. OK, let's move to Dropbox for business, and let's use single sign-on to be sure that we can at least control the identity, the authentication before accessing this application. And when you've been able to move to a sanctioned state, IT has some control against those applications. And depending on the application capabilities, if they provide an API, for example, to let you scan the content of those files, you will be able to identify the sensitive information that is stored within those applications. And you will be able to also apply classification and protection by using Azure Information Protection, for example. What you will have to do also is to be able to control the session, the user's session, when they will connect from unmanaged devices, for example. Because those APIs, connectors that CASB provide, they are great. They are providing nearly real-time for protecting your data. And nearly real-time is really important. Because sometimes, some data is so important that you don't want to allow any second of uh, data exposure for them. So what you can do is implement real-time control by using a solution that will be a reverse proxy to a CASB. That's also something that we'll cover. Another thing that you want to do is to, of course, look at the threads that you have in your cloud environment. And when we're talking about threads, they can be of many types. It can be just a malware that will be saved in your uh, company box maybe shared with many people within the company. They will download that application, and boom, the, the malware is spreading across the organization. So the attack would come from the cloud to on-premises. Not great. So it would be better to be able to identify when you have a malware sitting in your cloud environment before having that uh, specific file that download it on your endpoints. You also, also have to look for insider threats. Some actions will be and will not be intended by your user. Maybe they will just make a mistake. That's what we have to uh, put in place to protect them. But maybe you have some people that suddenly will try to exfiltrate data. Maybe they've heard that there is a, an acquisition coming and they're afraid to lose their jobs. So they're going to download all the data they can before moving to another company. That's something that you want to detect. How can we detect that? By using our advanced UEBA capabilities. We'll be able to identify when somebody activities differ to the patterns that we've learned in the past months. So that's something that we'll put in place. So those are the main uh, cases that we see here for CASB. So maybe you're just thinking, OK, that's great. Sebastian has been talking about CASB, but I'm here because I want a Microsoft CASB. OK, cool. So let's talk about Microsoft CASB. So at Microsoft, Regarding our approach for the CASB, Cloud App Security, if you've forgotten the name, it relies on several pillars. The first pillar will be identity and access management. We have to control the identity. We have to look if there is something strange in the user authentication before accessing the application. So that's going to be one of the first pillars that we're going to put in place. Threat protection, I already explained to you, that's extremely uh, important to be able to monitor what's happening and what's sitting within your cloud applications. The next one will be information protection. Your company data is extremely valuable. Users are sharing it internally, externally, most of the time without knowing that they should not be doing that. So we have to help them. And the last one will be security management, where we will be able to provide you uh, some recommendation based on your uh, AWS or Azure infrastructure deployment, saying, hey, did you know that you are uh, using about 20 VMs that have uh, SSH and RDP publicly exposed and publicly accessible to any hackers? That's something we want to tell you using the CASB. So what makes Cloud App Security unique in the CASB market? It's its integration with the full Microsoft security stack. 
We'll spend some time on the coming slides on different aspects, but let's start with the intelligence security graph. So if you're not familiar with the intelligence security graph, it's a collection of API that we have at Microsoft that will collect signals from billions of sources. We are using uh, inside that uh, intelligence security graph the authentication from the Azure AD users, but also the consumer part, like uh, Hotmail, Outlook.com, etc., Xbox Live, all the other services to be able to provide information to all our customers against possible threats, compromise identities, compromise, um, compromise mailboxes, compromise IP addresses. All those things will be used by our security services. The next thing that we're going to do, and we know that probably all of you, I, I hope all of you, love Secure Score because people want to have action points when they're using our cloud services. Am I secure? I'm not sure. But when your manager is coming to you and asks you, are we secure? At least by using Secure Score, you're able to say, hey, look at this. In the past six months, we moved from 50 to 300. So I'm doing a good job. And we have this integration between Cloud App Security and Secure Score. For the infrastructure uh, assessment, so the, the CSPM that I will detail later, we have integration with ASC, Azure Security Center, to provide you recommendation for your cloud infrastructures component. And we're also able to consume signals coming from Intune. I was talking on the use cases slides about devices that will be managed or unmanaged. How can we identify if a device is managed or not? We can use Azure AD domain join or hybrid joint, but also Intune to let the service know if the device is compliant with your, your security policies. And Intune provide that information. Azure Information Protection is also natively integrated to let you apply classification and protection of documents within your cloud application. So that's another great thing we have here. Azure AD and conditional access. I will show you how we extend the conditional access use cases by using Cloud App Security. And we have the integration with Windows Defender ATP to be able to collect all the Shadow IT information, so all the SaaS application that are used by your user within the corporate network, but also outside of the corporate network. So that's what we have here in those native integration. And of course, we've seen on the, on the first slide that we are supporting Office 365, but not only. We have many SaaS applications that we support, like all those leading ones that you see here on this slide. So let's spend some time now on uh, six use cases, and we'll go into details. And I hope you love demos. I don't know if you love demos. I hope you do. If you don't, I'm sorry, because I'm going to spend some time doing some demo and show you how those things work. But if you prefer slides, just let me know so I can spend more, more time on slides. Who wants to say on the slide? OK, yeah, I, sorry. I tried to shame some people, but everybody's you know, happy to be here and seeing some demo. That's great. So let's first spend some, some time on discovery, the cloud application that are in use within your organization. So the shadow IT discovery. So I told you that the CASB use case is to discover the applications that are in use within your company. And when we talk about this, this is not only an IT matter. That's something that you will have to discuss with your compliance team. You will have to ask them, is this application compatible with our policy? Should we use this or not? It's not only your responsibility as IT person. You have to bring the business in the discussion and really define some uh, strong processes to manage this. And part of the processes will be to first discover the application. As I told you, identify the risk level of those kind of <sighs> applications and compare that uh, assessment to your internal requirements. And then you will have to analyze the usage. So I've detected that we have risky cloud storage application within my environment. Are my user uploading some data there? That's something you have to monitor. And then you will try to move those applications to a managed state. Move it to SSO, for example. Connect Cloud App Security to the API of those applications to be able to scan them, 
to remove sharings to external companies or anonymous links. All those things can be applied there. And then, of course, you have to continuously mirror, uh, monitor what's happening uh, with those applications. So that's really a process that you have to put in place when you start this kind of project. Technically speaking, it's not that difficult, but you will need some help for the right person within the company to implement this. So we'll show this uh, in details during the demo, but Cloud App Security will provide you that dashboard with the information on the application type that are in use within your company, the user that are accessing those applications, the risk of those applications, uh, the information about this application being managed or not. All those things will be available there. And we also have to be able to get that information and integration with your firewall in your proxy. So we implement something called a log collector. That's a virtual appliance that will receive all those logs from your network appliances. But we also have a native integration with Cloud Secure Gateway like uh, iBoss or Zscaler. So if you're using one of those solutions, we have that native integration that will let those uh, secure gateway send the logs directly to Cloud App Security, get also the assessment of those applications right uh, away to the, uh, to the secure web gateway, and those secure web gateway will be able to apply some restriction. So let's say you've defined that within your company, people cannot access collaboration tools uh, with a specific risk score, with that native integration, your user will not be able to access those applications anymore because they will be blocked by the secure web gateway. And that's the nice screen that they will have. So you are able to educate your user. And we have also some customers that have implemented customized page to explain exactly why they cannot access that application. So that's great. Thank you, Sebastian, for that information. But I'm not using iBoss. I'm not using Zscaler. What can I do? What you can do is to use Windows Defender ATP. So we are using Windows Defender ATP to get that information, and we'll provide you dedicated reports on uh, the application used by your user. And this integration is a one-click button. When you go to Windows Defender ATP, you click that checkbox, and then all the discovery data will be sent to Cloud App Security, where it will be analyzed. That's great, nothing new. I came to Ignite because I want to get more insights. OK, so you want new things, I guess. Yeah, you're so excited. I'm so happy to be with you. So do you see that nice sticker there, new? What you see here, because I was talking about nat native integration, is something that will come very soon in Windows Defender ATP and that will let you block access to those applications without installing any agent or using any secure web gateway like Zscaler or iBoss. So that's pretty cool, right? Yeah, some people are, I was hoping for some screams. Yeah, I want that so bad, thanks. That's the first thing. I think I have 15 news uh, to announce during this session. So first one, okay, I hope you will be more excited for the coming ones, but that's a great integration. Another thing that we propose also is uh, reporting for your management. We have an executive report that can be provided to them using an export of the Shadow IT Discovery. So that's something that looks like what you see here. When your manager asks you, OK, where are we with that uh, Shadow IT project? Here, you have the PDF, you have the report, you have the recommendation. That's great. We're trying to make your life easier. Second new thing. We've heard from you. We know that many people want to be able to provide custom reporting. You've seen that PDF that we have. We announced two weeks ago at RSA, now integration with Power BI and Log Analytics to provide you custom reporting capabilities. So why would you do that? You would do that if you have some uh, process in place to define business owner, for example. In many companies I've been working with, they have some people that will be in charge of managing that, a specific application. Let's say that Salesforce is in place in my company. The business owner is not going to be the IT guy. It's going to be somebody from the business. And you want to keep track of all those people responsible of managing that application. So you're going to manage Office 365. They're going to manage that application. And we want to keep 
track of all those business owners somewhere. We want to also provide reporting with uh, usage per department. That's something that you can do using that custom reporting. So that will come really soon. We presented this two weeks ago. That will be uh, something uh, really, really interesting for most of you, I'm sure of it. Another thing that we also provide with Shadow IT Discovery is not only access to risky application, because that's great. You see that we have some application that are not managed, that are risky, but that's not the only thing that we want to do with Discovery. Another thing that we want to do is discover risky application that are able to access your own environment without any user interaction. And that thing is called the OAuth apps. Uh, and I will show you further how we can work with this. But we can assess for you which application have a delegate access to your company data. And we provide you uh, information like the community of that application and the, the access right of that application against your environment. Let's think about, for example, um, an internal application accessing Office 365, being able to download all the documents instead of a user. That's something that we'll be able to detect. For those who didn't know what all WhatsApp are, maybe this specific screen, uh, screen will help you. So you see that sometimes it can be a phishing attempt for malware, or it will be a button asking for some delegated access, like this one here for Gmail. So, the application will ask the user consent and say, hey, to be able to use that great application, you have to let me come to your company uh, data, Office 365, Salesforce, Google, whatever. But you have to click on that button to grant access. Do you accept? And as a good end user, you will think, oh, yes, I really want to use that application, so I grant access to my data. And that's how cloud ransomware can work. If you spend some time on the net, search, on the net searching for Cloud ransomware, you will find interesting stories. So let's move to a demo. So when you go to Cloud App Security, so this is the general dashboard here. You can go to the Cloud Discovery dashboard, and this is where I'm, we're going to present you with all the Shadow IT information. And you see that here in the dashboard, you have instant visibility on the traffic used by your user against those applications. And we provide you visibility on sanctioned application versus unsanctioned or not yet analyzed. So yeah, green is good, red is bad. Remember that. When you go to the discovered application, you can easily search against all the discovered application within the environment and look at the risk score. You can also search for application type, like, for example, here, cloud storage. And you can also look for here a specific risk score. So the risk score is a value that we calculate for you based on some baselines and on 80 things that we will assess. So if I look at, let's say, we transfer, I'm pretty sure most of you have seen that application within your company. You see that it has a score of 5 on 10, and we explain you why we have that rating. So we have some general information. We tell you where the data center of that application are located. So for us, OK, Ireland is great. It's in the EU. But maybe we have some application that will store your data in China or North Korea. Who cares? You want to store your data there? No, probably not. And we provide you information about the security capabilities of that application. Can we apply IP restriction? No, you can't. Can I um, here uh, define password policy? No, you can't. And do they provide penetration testing? This information is not publicly available. Does it support SAML? No, it doesn't. So all those things have an impact on the risk score of an application. And you can go to our setting and customize uh, what's really important for you, so the risk score will be evaluated based on your own requirements. We also provide compliance information and assessment, but also legal, like things related to GDPR. So using this, that will be quite easy to find application with a risk score of um, 0 to 10. And you can go further in the filtering and say, mm, I want to find all those applications 
that do not support SAML and that are in use with my company. So here, I want to find all those applications. And once you have your, those applications, you can start triaging them. You can say, for example, hmm, that iDraft thing, I don't trust that application, so I'm going to tag it as unsanctioned. So tagging an application means that your secure web gateway, like Zscaler, iBoss, or Windows Defender ATP, will block access to that application. So that's why it's important to flag those applications. But you can also add extra uh, settings. Like, let's say that this application, LiveDrive, I've seen my CIO using that application. Maybe I don't want to restrict access to that application. What I'm going to do is move and is tag here this application to, to review. So I'll be able to go to those users and say, hey, we've seen that you're using those applications. They are quite risky. Is there a reason that you're using this application instead of SharePoint or a Box? And then you can start a discussion with them. But here, at least, you have that information available. So that's the Shadow IT part. I will not go into all the details because I can speak for more than one hour only for that section. But that's what you can do here to find those applications. So all the things that I've shown you here, I did some manual filtering. But what you want probably uh, to implement is to automate those actions. And in Cloud App Security, to automate action, you have to use what we call policies. So you could create here a new policy by just clicking on that button. And that button will show you uh, the settings that you've used. And based on the settings that you've defined here, you could apply some actions like, for example, automatically tagging an application as sanction or sanction to review or whatever. OK, makes sense? So this is, in 10 minutes, what we can do with discovery. And I will show you at the end uh, a link to our webinar series that we are having at the moment, where we are going to the details of everything that I'm showing you here. But we have so many things to cover that I cannot go into all the details. So let's move to cloud threats. So how can we detect that? So cloud threats, as I already explained, can be a rogue application, a malicious user trying to exfiltrate some data, maybe a ransomware, or some compromised account. We've detected that we have some accounts that have been uh, compromised somewhere, and people are using them. Those are some of the threats that we want to identify. Cloud App Security will be able to look at your user activities and identities plus file across all those, the application that we have flagged as sanctioned and for which we have access. So we'll be able to detect things like malware that will be stored in those applications or malicious OWASP delegation, suspicious activity from dangerous IP addresses or impossible travel, unusual location, all those things are based on our machine learning. You will be able also to detect unusual file sharing or file download based again on the UBA. Yeah, Seb Sebastian is suddenly downloading many files. This is not normal. Is it a malicious threat, uh, malicious action from Sebastian? Or maybe after looking at this, you see that Sebastian is connecting from, uh, from North Korea and downloading the files. So that's maybe not him because he's sitting right here in the office. That's something you want to detect. And of course, you can look at impersonated activities by looking at how uh, people are accessing those applications. We provide, by default, uh, about 20 built-in policy that will provide you the right information about this. But you can, of course, create your own uh, policies based on some activities that we'll detect. And we will provide you, on, in the alert page, details about why we trigger that alert, all the related activities uh, from the audit log and information about the location that was used to access your cloud application. And this is your, the, the kind of thing that you can detect the, within the, the malware page. So you see that in the malware page, we'll provide this kind of information like uh, eCore file from the test, but could be any uh, malware in any of those cloud applications. And Something that's great with this is that we provide you reports coming from the Microsoft Threat Intelligence team. So you have some details about this. You just have to click here, and you will have a PDF explaining you what that malware is. OK, great. Is that all? No. The new sticker is there. We just announced 
that now, in addition to that file reputation capability that we have for years, we are adding file sandboxing. What does it mean? It means that when we will identify malicious or potential malicious files, what we'll do is take those files in our system and try to open those files, try to access it, and see if those files are making some malicious actions. So that's an extra capability to protect your cloud storage application. So new feature, great feature, coming really soon. The other thing that we have here, because we're talking about threat detection, is the capability to capture all the user and the administrator actions. And this is extremely important when you have to investigate against cloud threats. OK, we've seen that something happened. How did it happen? How was this file shared with external companies? You want to audit this. And that's something that we'll be able to do there. And something new that we just announced recently for those investigation capabilities is to extend the investigation capabilities for hybrid identity. Everybody is familiar with hybrid identity? So hybrid identity is a combination of user identity on-premises in your Active Directory and in the cloud. And that identity in the cloud will be in Azure AD or maybe in any other application that you have. It was really difficult for SecOps team to look at what really happened against the local, the on-premises Active Directory and the Azure AD in the cloud. They had to look in both console, try to find the right information. So what we just did was to ingest all the information that comes from Azure ATP. So Azure ATP is our solution to protect your Active Directory domain controllers. We're collecting all that information and we'll provide you a new page for your user, your user um, page here with what we call an investigation priority. Investigation priority is a score that will let you know which user should be investigated in priority based on the alerts that we had, but also based on the actions that they have in the past uh, days. And we'll also provide you visibility on all the system they accessed, plus all the, all the risky actions they did. Like here, we provide visibility on the score that increased that global score, like downloading files that have been classified with highly confidential uh, classification from untrusted location. That's going to increase the risk score, especially if we see some alerts across our other solutions. And what we're going to do also, because we are, we're built a UEBA solution and collecting signals from all those solutions, we're also sending those signals back to Azure Active Directory Identity Protection. Like here, you see that this is an identity page, but the risk uh, of that specific user has increased because we detected in Cloud App Security that a malicious inbox rule was created in Exchange Online. So we are, we are really now bringing all our system together to talk. So let's move to a small demo. So what you can do when you've seen an alert, for example, so this is the alert page. So let's say that, let's find impossible travel activity here. So that's one of the things that we can alert you based on the, the UEBA capabilities. You can always look at the user that did this action, and you can go further by investigating in the activity log. In the activity log here, you see that I only have the activities that were relevant for that specific alerts, but you can create any search, and we provide some queries by default, like give me all the download activities, and I want to have the download activities that were performed by a user called Adil. And you will be able to get all those details. You can also add filters like uh, give me all those details from risky location. And again, just like for uh, the disco report, when you find something that should be automated, you can just click on new policy from search and you will be able to automate your actions. And part of the automation that you will have here, you can apply some governance action, like sending an email to some people, suspending the user, or maybe requesting the user to sign in again by making his token expire. 
that's some of the things that you can do. Another thing that you probably want to see here is the extract capabilities I showed you. So if I move now to my activity log in another environment, you can see that in the application that I have in this environment, I have now Active Directory, which means that for my Active Directory apps, I will be able to query Active Directory to get details about some specific activities like, uh, let's say, remote desktop. Give me all the users that connected using the remote desktop to my domain controllers, because this is an agent running on the domain controllers, so you get information from the DCs. So that's an easy way to see, hmm, we've seen some uh, issues here for that user. Let's investigate. Or you can check also which server that person accessed. And we do that by looking at the Kerberos activities and the tokens that were provided. So you're really able to, to look at all your identity-related activities on-premises, but in the cloud, too. If I move to the alert page, you can see that we have here some classic cloud app security alerts. Maybe some of you already know some of those activities. But you see that here I have for a user some user and IP addresses reconnaissance. And this comes from Active Directory. So let's look at a specific alert here. So again, we provide you some details about the user and what the user did. But the new user page I was talking about is now accessible and show you exactly what, uh, what made us think that this specific user is at risk. And you can see here that in my um, example, that user is at risk because we have some login activities that are pretty normal. But here you see that we have a risky sign-in. This was an, an unusual sign-in for that user. It connected from another location, maybe using another browser, all those things. And you can see that this user is higher than, than his user investigation priority is higher than 90% of all the other users within your company. So that's probably a user that you want to investigate. And we'll also provide you information about the evolution of that risk score. OK? Information protection was another use case. So prevent unauthorized data from being shared externally or anonymously something that you want to look. And this is as simple in Cloud App Security as clicking on a filter that will, where you can ask, give me all the files from that application that are shared externally. And we will provide you this information. And based on your investigation, you'll be able to go further by taking some governance action. Like, for example, removing external user or making the file private applying a classification label. So you know that some files are shared externally. Maybe you want to apply the, some protection to those files, just to be sure that external user cannot do something malicious to it. Those are some of the things that you'll be able to do there. But you also can now work with sensitive data and discover sensitive data that will be in the cloud or shared externally. So Cloud App Security is part of the Microsoft Information Protection. Uh, if you don't know, Microsoft Information Protection, it's actually a collection of products like Azure Information Protection, Cloud App Security, Windows Information Protection, Windows Defender ATP. Uh, we have also the AIP scanner. We also have uh, Office 365 ATP, etc. So all those things fit, are part of what we call MIP. And MIP concept is really to let you discover and classify sensitive information, apply protection based on your policy, monitor, remediate malicious action to that data, and be sure that you stay compliant with your policy. So how can you do that? I told you that we have that native integration with AIP into MCAS. You see that this is a simple checkbox. You want to integrate MCAS with Azure Information Protection. You click on that button, and that's it. You'll be able to identify, classify information, and apply classification and protection. Something we added also uh, two months ago is the ability to inspect protected files. So if you're already using AIP protection, MCAS can inspect that protected document to be sure that it doesn't contain sensitive information. We also have an integration with uh, the unified sensitive data type that you also have in Office 365. So you have 
this in Office 365, Cloud App Security and AIP, to let you define what are the sensitive data type for your organization. We provide some templates by default, but you can create your own type of sensitive data that Cloud App Security will be able to consume. And of course, to be able to govern your data based on that information, you can now apply DLP rules across all your solutions. So many people ask all the time, OK, I'm using Office 365 DLP. What's the difference? The main difference will be that we'll be able to apply some uh, governance action like protect that document, apply that AIP classification, but not only for Office 365, but across all your SaaS application, all the cloud storage application used within your company. So you say consistent with your DLP rules across the cloud apps. And this is an example where you see the AIP integration, where you can just select the labels that you want to apply. New things. Yeah. Ah, thank you. <laughs> if I had a, a t-shirt, I will just give it. But sorry, I don't have any goodies. Maybe next year if we have more budget. So something, yeah, marketing message. So if you've been using AIP, you've probably seen that now that we are moving to the unified labeling we are able to send the data, discovered data, and all the activities related to that data to a log analytic workspace in Azure. I'm announcing to you this information now that Cloud App Security will send this kind of information to that log analytics workspace. So you will have AIP, the, scan, the scanner, Windows Defender ATP for the endpoint, um, looking at the sensitive data stored, but also Cloud App Security. So we have that unified capabilities and unified reporting now. So those are here an example, something that you will see really soon in your environment with all the different uh, changes that happen for you files that are stored in the cloud. Super exciting, right? Yes. Thank you. Small demo. So let's move to my investigation capabilities here. So when you want to look for information protection in your environment, you can go to the file section and you can search for files. Like, let's say, I want to find files that are shared externally and publicly. And we have two public because one of those uh, means that Google indexes those files. Maybe you've read some uh, data leaks in Box this week. If you search for box leak, you will find interesting stuff. So you can get that information here. And maybe you want to also get information about the classification of those files. So you see that we have many filters that we can apply, but you can also apply here in the filter, an Azure Information Protection filter, which means that here I'm asking Cloud App Security to give me visibility on all these confidential and highly confidential files that are stored in my cloud application and that are accessible externally and publicly. And you see that here, I have all those results for all those files. So what you can do here, you see also that uh, we have some policy matches. You could decide to just maybe remove the classification label, not great, but maybe making private. So if I just take this action, make private, I'm able to remove all the sharing of that file instantly. And you can, of course, do this by using policy, just like for the other automation capabilities that I showed you before. And then the file is green and compliant. Everybody's happy. Another thing that you can do, if we look at those uh, different files that we have in our environment, is not only looking for AIP classified files, because I'm sure that most of you are not yet using uh, classification for all your files. What we have to do is create policy that will look at the content of those files. And what we'll be able to then do is to look for files that will be, for example, uh, here I have a policy looking for banking data in my cloud application. And let's say I want to add a credit card number you can find all those uh, specific things here. What can I find interesting in my apps? Maybe social security numbers can be interesting too, etc. And what you can do when you've seen that you have this kind of sensitive data in the cloud is to 
look at the related activities. By just clicking here, I'll be able to go to the activity log related to that file and see. So here, uh, that file was uh, probably uploaded more than six months ago. But I can easily see that some people downloaded that file, accessed that file, and you can look at the location. You can have the details about that location, how, broad it's, how broadly it's used within your company, etc. So that would be an easy way to verify if that specific data was exfiltrated in the past months. So that's a way to pivot from information protection to data leaks investigation. So block download of cloud apps through personal devices. So that's a great feature that we have now and that relies on our reverse proxy capabilities. I'm sure that pretty all of you know about conditional access capabilities. So conditional access is an Azure AD capability that lets you define some condition based on the user, based on the risk, based on the platform in the location from which that user is connecting. And what we do in the conditional access policies, we will look at all those signals to apply some controls based on the risk of the session. The controls that we apply can be request an MFA, maybe ask for resetting the password, or just block access to the cloud application. But what we can do with cloud app security is extending those capabilities by applying real-time control in line, so in the user session, and not just blocking access to an application. Example here, we have a user connecting from an end managed device, accessing the corporate box environment. And oops, sorry, forgot it. we had animation here. And based on the risk of the session, the user will maybe be allowed to view the file in online, but will not be able to download the file. But maybe for some other user, you want to allow the download, but only if you can apply AIP protection at download. Something that we announced recently is now the control right in the Azure AD conditional access policy configuration. So you can configure this by going to session and define the controls that you want to apply, like block download or just monitor what the user are doing. And if you want to go further with more advanced policies, you have to go to cloud app security. So this is what it looks like when a user tries to download a file from an unmanaged device, in my case, the download will be blocked. And we can explain that user why the download was blocked. Something new, new feature, is to now not only apply a specific AIP protection at download, but apply custom permission when the user downloads that file. And we provide you viewer, reviewer, co-owner or, or co of that file. So we're going to apply a protection dedicated for that user when that user downloads the file to an end managed device. Something else that is new here. We are able to now, for the integrated application, like here, um, Facebook, Workplace by Facebook, is to apply some restriction when a user posts a message in a chat. So let's say that the user is posting some sensitive data to somebody else or maybe password or whatever, we are able to now block this. Next new feature, we are now able to block upload. We had that request from many companies. I just don't want to let people coming from external location or unmanaged device upload something into my environment. We are able to restrict those uploads now. And Another great feature that we have is that we can also have now, in addition to the view, view uh, online access, we can restrict copy paste of data from those files, those documents stored in uh, OneDrive or a box when people try to just copy paste that document. Other great announcement, you've seen this to protect your cloud application. You can actually protect your on-premises application if they are integrated with uh, Azure AD Web Proxy. So you can protect your on-prem SharePoint, for example, or your team foundation server, like on this example. But let's move to a demo that will be more exciting. So what I'm going to do here is connect to my environment using a non-admin user called Adil, and I'm connecting from an unmanaged device. When that user wants to access the corporate data from an unmanaged device, like in this case, 
my company box, you can see that I have this message telling me that my session is being monitored. OK, great. Let's continue. But you can see here that for that user, when the user is accessing the application, you have here, after the URL, an eu.cas.ms add-in, meaning that you are passing through MCAS, and MCAS is analyzing all the action of that user in real time. So it means that for that user, the user will be able to look at the files that we have. Like here, in this case, I have social security number. But let's say I want to download that file on my unmanaged device. Let's click on download. And you see that, oh, the download is blocked. What I got instead is a placeholder that I can give to my IT and explaining why I wasn't able to download this file. OK, great. I'm not able to download this. What I'm going to do is to copy that into one of my documents on my PC. So I can just right click and click Copy. Hey, sorry, we're also blocking that capability. So the user is not able to exfiltrate data in that way. Isn't it great? Yeah. Oh, thank you. So yeah, you've seen that I'm, uh, I'm addicted to applause. So something else. Because here, that's great. Those are cloud applications. But you know, in my company, we don't like cloud. I hate Office 365. I hate all those SaaS applications. I know that they exist, but I don't want to provide access to them. OK, you want to grant access to your external user to the on-premises website? Let's do that. Let's federate them with Azure AD and publish them with AD proxy. Like what I do here with my finance internal site. So if I try to access my internal SharePoint site, you see that, again, I'm being monitored. And you will see at the look that this is a great uh, SharePoint 2013 running on a server in my basement. So I was a bit afraid before the session that my wife turned off that server. It's not in Azure because I want it to be, yeah, on-prem. So this is a real server on-premises. And you see that that's great. I'm being proxied. I can access my document, but if I try to download, this is blocked again. So you are granting access to on-premises resources, but controlling exactly what the user can do. And this is the first time we are showcasing this in a event, so you're super lucky to see that. <laughs> great, right? So this is a really, really great feature that you can implement, especially when you have the bring your own device project, because you are granting access to cloud application from any device, but you're applying control at the identity level, but also at the session level to know exactly what you're going to allow or not to your user. Enterprise integration. So I've been talking about DLP capabilities of the product, but we know that many of you are using extra on-premises DLP servers, like Simon Tank Ventu, for example. We have that integration. We can integrate with on-premises DLP solution if you want to reuse the rules that you're using on-premises for your cloud application. We also export all the alerts and the related activities to your SIEM if you want to manage everything within the SIEM. And we can automate process using a rich API or partial module. OK, that's great. But let's go a bit further. If you want to automate all the alerts that will come within your solution, we have now an integration with Microsoft Flow. So Microsoft Flow is an automation uh, solution running in Azure and that you can use for managing uh, many things, consumer copying files to a specific location or downloading uh, automatically the attachment to your OneDrive. But what we did is to create a specific connector to let you automate the investigation from the alert to, uh, to uh, flow. Here is an example. Uh, we have, and actually we have more than 200 connector now. Here is an example that when we have an alert, for example, we have detected that some user identity has been compromised. What you want to do is to send a message using one of our connector to that user because I don't want to send an email because maybe that user account is compromised. You're sending an SMS and you're sending an email to the user manager. 
asking for some actions. Like, do we want to um, go further? Do you want to close the alert? Do you want to disable that user account? Or do you want to escalate to the next level of my security operation team? So those are some of the things that we can do using that integration. And right after the session, if you want to have a look at what we can do, I will spend one hour showing great stuff to automate uh, all those security alert management. Here is an example of the email that the manager will receive with the related information. And people can just define exactly what they want to do. So we can send emails asking for a decision to anybody. So this can be pretty complex. Another thing that we have, new thing again, I'm pretty sure that now all of you know about Azure Sentinel. So who doesn't know about Azure Sentinel? One, two, okay, Azure, only three, that's great. So Azure Sentinel is Microsoft's team that we announced two weeks ago during, uh, or right before RSA. So this is going to let you collect all the logs from your Microsoft solution, but also on-premises solution, firewalls, uh, switch, uh, anything actually, any solution, and you're going to ingest everything into Sentinel and create your custom alerts. And of course, again, automation playbooks based on logic apps. And we have now that native integration with Cloud App Security, and in one click, you can now send the MCAS information into Azure Sentinel. Another thing that we can do to let you automate your alert management is integration with the Graph Security API. So probably you've heard about Graph, Microsoft Graph, that lets you access Office 365 and all our services to do whatever you want. We also have that integration with the Security API to manage the alerts, uh, work also with Secure Score. And what we do by using this API, we let you access alert information across all the Microsoft solution, but also the third-party vendors that are integrated with our uh, API like Symantec, like Palo Alto, and many more. So that's something that you can use. Instead of it selling SIM agent for every solution you have within the company, use Graph, and you will be able to get all that information with a common schema to be able to build your own advanced correlation. Last part, CASB for Cloud Platform. So I explained you that we have a capability here uh, for looking at uh, your infrastructure in the cloud and provide recommendation. This is a native integration that we have with Azure Security Center. So if we have ASC admin here, you know about those recommendations that you can find in ASC. What we're doing is providing the same signal, the same information to both consoles so people know exactly what's happening across SaaS, but also PaaS and YAS. And we're going to also provide more details about how to improve your security posture in Azure, but also in AWS, because we know that you're probably multi-cloud companies. And this is an example of the assessment that we do for you and tell you we we'll have, uh, for example, uh, you don't have a next generation firewall. That's something you want to implement to be sure that you can restrict access to your server and your application. You have remote desktop accessible, et cetera, et cetera. And here is an example for AWS where we can alert you when we detect that you have S3 buckets publicly available and potentially sharing externally sensitive information. So here, and I think I'm, yeah, I have 55 seconds. I, if you want to take one picture for that presentation, I would recommend that slide. Because if you want to get started with MCAS, just go to that first URL and you will be able to start a trial for 30 days. If you want to get more details on everything that I've been talking today, we have started a webinar series. So this morning we had the second episode and all those um, different webinars will be available offline if you go to that specific URL. I will recommend you to go there and watch those different uh, uh, web webinar that we'll have. And you have here the community that I would recommend to join because what we're doing now with that public community, we're pushing all the blog posts that we have with the new feature. We are posting there the private preview. So if you want to start a new feature before everybody else, go there and you can ask for onboarding. So go there and register. And lastly, 
If you want to join me for a next automation session, right after this one, uh, somewhere close from here, please come and we'll have a lot of fun with uh, MTP automation and flow automation. Thank you for your time. And if you have some questions, I'm still here for a couple of minutes.